If you travel north in Texas, well, eventually, you won't be in Texas anymore, Dorothy. But stop just short of Oklahoma, and you'll reach one of the most underrated towns in the Lone Star State that reminds us all, sometimes, what starts in Texas truly does change the world. Denison, Texas! Choo-choo, baby! <laughs> Denison lies a little over an hour north of Dallas and just a Texas two-step from the Red River. Welcome to Denison, one of the northern front doors to the great state of Texas, or first line of defense against Oklahoma. I mean, however you want to see it. But this railroad town didn't get started until the 1870s, and when it took, it took off. It now has one of the most picturesque main streets in the state. It's also beside one of our most popular lakes, and that, my friends, has Day Tripper written all over it. Denison became an early industrial hub for the Katy Railroad, and its boom built what they say is the longest main street in Texas that today is full of everything from antiques to monsters. <laughs> in its many years, Denison has been home to many a famous Texan. Sully, the captain who heroically landed his plane in the Hudson River, was born and graduated here. Tuskegee Airman Jewel Butler also called Denison home. And of course, one can't forget about historic Selfie Girl. I mean, I remember learning about her in history class. And unusually, it was also the place where famous gunslinger Doc Holliday opened a dental office as he battled tuberculosis. He was a doctor after all, but that must have been a tough sell to get new patients. Well, hey there, Huckleberry. Might I interest you in a bit of dental work today? Oh, don't mind the blood. I've just uh, had a bit of a nosebleed. <coughs> I actually think I'm good. I'll tell you what. Beat me in polka, first root canal's free. That is a very generous offer, uh, but I actually think I'm pretty good today. Say when. When? Whenever you need dental work is when you say when. Whenever that might be. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. I am up to two stars on Yelp. Another good reason to brush your teeth, kids. Now there are plenty of others to talk about, but before we go any further, it's time to eat. Now my favorite Beatles song, for obvious reasons, is Day Tripper. A close second, Blackbird. But rather than serve in the dead of night, this Cafe Blackbird is the best place to start the day. The Blackbird was opened by Carly Dunham with her husband and daughter who simply wanted a good sandwich. It was just a vision of just everything made from scratch every day and just do simple food really well. So everything's made here mm -hmm. in-house, like sandwich bread even? sandwich bread, we make our salad dressings, we make our pies, we always have people ask us where we get our cakes. Like it, it's so weird that we bake them here, but we really do everything in this tiny little kitchen in the back. Carly is a third generation restaurateur who chose to look backwards when building her modern cafe. A lot of these are family recipes. If I didn't get it from a relative, yeah. church lady cookbooks, you know, you've oh, always I love seen those. Church lady yeah, those are oh, the yeah. best. If it worked in 1954 for the it's United States women, it'll yes. still work. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's still working, yeah. yeah. The fresh baked bread is something else. And speaking of church ladies. You might need this. What is this? That's our homemade pimento cheese. Oh, this looks awesome. There's a stigma around pimento cheese, but I try to tell them it's not store bought. Oh my gosh. That's good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> is this the serving size for me? A whole loaf of bread <laughs> yes, and a whole... Yes, that's just for you. Yes, enjoy. <laughs> it's like soup of the day. Yeah, it's pimento I know, cheese. yeah. Well, Chet, don't fill up on pimento cheese because I want to make you one of our most popular sandwiches. Okay. The Greek, served on fresh baked bread with garlic mayo, ham, veggies, and pepperoncinis. Greece, you better take notes. 
That looks amazing. I know, it is good. And we haven't even toasted it yet. Well, let's go. Have you thought about dessert? Let's go over here and look. All right. Blackbird's walnut chocolate chip cookies are famous, but decisions are hard. Okay, so chocolate chest, buttermilk, German chocolate. This cake's beautiful. Pina colada, everybody loves that cake. I guess since you didn't pre-slice this one, this just counts as a piece? Yeah, that's just one, that's just okay, for you. Okay, this one will be it, mm -hmm. thank you. With your pimento cheese bucket. Yes. <laughs> You know, there are a few things in life better than a scratch bakery. Well, I got the Greek sandwich here, the Greek salad, some of the house-made tomato basil, some of their pina colada cake, and Carly said I had to get a cookie. I'm tempted to start with dessert, but I'm gonna start right here. Oh, that's awesome. Homemade bread is what takes sandwiches into another universe. Like, I could totally see myself becoming this weird, old, crotchety bread man. Like, <laughs> oh, wow. That's amazing. I know this is probably a little disorienting for y'all to see the day tripper with the salad in front of him. It'll be over soon, don't worry. That Greek dressing's nuts. So good. All right, we got the appetizer out of the way. Time for the main course. Oh, I don't know if I'm eating cake or I'm sipping something poolside. Like that tastes like a frozen pina colada in cake form. Ooh. If this is a taste of what Denison has in store, it is gonna be a very, Good day. So did y'all know Denison was this big? I had no clue. Yeah. Downtown just keeps on going. Yeah. It just That's one of the more impressive uh, main streets. For Denison was a common viewer feedback right in. Oh, you need to come to Denison. You gotta come to Denison. I was like, but that's far. Plus it's risky. I mean, you might accidentally take a wrong turn, end up in Oklahoma. Whoa. It's like right there. It's a few blocks that Sweet. way. Baby Stop Jesus. the trucks. Let Don't me out. be scared. I think I know where I'm going. Break out the map quest right now. I wanna see it. <laughs> <Yeah>. the map <laughs> We should be fine. But now it's time to talk about Denison's most famous son. A man who led not just Texas, but our world through some of its most challenging times. General and President Dwight D. Eisenhower. Commander in Chief and Supreme Commander of the Allied Forces in Europe during World War II. Born in Denison in 1890, he would eventually go on to live in a White House in DC, but it all started in this White House in Denison. Time to visit Eisenhower's birthplace with site manager John Akers. And I think it's safe to say he likes Ike. He started off, his notoriety was as a general. Uh, he commanded the D-Day invasion, the largest seaborne invasion in world history. And he had to make, make the call on a weather report to launch this invasion. He actually had a letter in his pocket ready to take responsibility in case of failure. So wow. an incredible individual. That's true leadership the kind that's forged through challenge and humble roots. Welcome, Chet. We are in the room where Dwight Eisenhower was born on the evening of October 14th, 1890, in this room. Wow. No hospitals in Denison at the time. The neighbors, neighbor women, who delivered the baby. Wow. At that time, this entire block was a working class neighborhood for railroad employees. But this house had a front row seat. We're just 30 feet away from the railroad tracks outside these windows. This whole house would have rattled every time a train came by. It would have. And the best part is these are uh, steam locomotives. So where's that soot? Where's that, where's that oh, smoke no. going? It's blowing into the house through the windows. Maybe why the family moved back to Kansas just one and a half years after Dwight was born. But it wasn't until after he became famous that they decided to protect his home and welcome him back for a grand celebration. We are in the dining room, the scene right. of what we call the Big Texas Breakfast which was Dwight Eisenhower's first adult visit back to Denison and to this house on April 20th, 1946. He has breakfast here. He gets a parade down Main Street. They roll out the red carpet. For they him. did. It was a big deal. Years later in 1953, Eisenhower became president. He created the interstate highway system, signed NASA into existence, and ushered in one of the most prosperous eras in U.S. history. But his journey all started right here in Denison. This isn't the only place in town that bears the general's name. Just a few miles up the road, you'll find Eisenhower State Park on the banks of Lake Texoma. The views alone are worthy of such a legacy. And joining me here on Lover's Leap is Park Superintendent Amanda Parsons. 
All right, Amanda, so this is Lake Texoma. Yes. Does that mean I'm looking at Oklahoma? Yes, that does. All right, good. So as long as I don't go out into the middle of the lake too far. You stay in Texas. Okay, good. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's a 90,000 surface acre lake. Majority of our shoreline sits on a limestone bluff. Water lovers can swim, fish, and boat to their heart's content, while land dwellers can hike and fossil hunt. So you can see some there just behind you. Uh, which this? are going to be ammonites, yes, yeah. That's an ammonite? That is an ammonite, yes. Man, I, I, I knew that. And if that wasn't cool enough, this is the only Texas State Park in history with a designated dirt bike course. You can tell this is a very special state park. It is like, special to me, at least. That's awesome. Thanks, Amanda. Yeah. So this is the designated swim beach. It's awesome. It's in this protected cove. But, you know, before we get wet, let's go work up a sweat. Sounds like a 1980s Olivia Newton-John song to me. <laughs> These towering cliffs have crumbled, breaking off massive boulders and creating a climber's playground. Okay guys, I'm by no means a professional boulderer, which will become extremely evident as soon as I start doing this, but I did bring a crash pad and some shoes. So now, find a rock and climb it. You know, it just feels different when you take the stairs. Check this out. So it's a cave carved out of these sandstone cliffs covered in what appears to be ancient hieroglyphs. Amy loves Dave. Who can only imagine Amy and Dave living here maybe millions of years ago. I guess just years of water lapping up against this soft sandstone has carved out this cave. Bum ba dum ba bum ba da. Ah, ah, back up, back up, backing up. I've crawled through caves of water falling daddy long legs too many times. I think I'm done. All right, now I do believe it's time to swim. Man, I gotta say, this is a fantastic state park. One of the gems of North Texas, no doubt. The perfect spot for a crew swim break. All right, y'all, we gotta hurry, let's go. Where's Chet? Where is he? Is he asleep? That's Oklahoma out that way. You gotta get him. Chet, you're going to Oklahoma! Whew, that was a close one. Hey, we all need friends from time to time. Speaking of, our next stop is to hear a truly epic story about a time when all of Europe needed the help of a Texan friend named T.V. Munson. His home, La Venita, is now a museum making sure his incredible story is not forgotten. This is historian Andrew Snyder. So Andrew, I think this is a story that far too few Texans know. So who was T.V. Munson? He was a horticulturist, a grape breeder. He uh, was born in Illinois, came down here where he's quoted as saying, I've found my grape paradise. Munson loved wild grapes and became a vine expert known the world over. Something very handy when France needed help. The French were actually going through a phylloxera, an insect that attacks the, uh, the roots of grapevines. Thousands of acres of grapes were being devastated. They knew he was an expert, so they contacted him saying, can you help us solve it? France stood to lose its entire wine industry. France without wine. But Munson answered the call. He discovered a hardy Texas rootstock resistant to the pest. The French grafted their vines on top of the Texan roots and voila, wine is saved. You can't overstate it. He saved the French wine industry. He did. I mean, you know wine is an intricate part of the French culture. And so for that to be devastated uh, would have changed France as we know it. The French government gave him the Legion of Honor. They knocked on his door and presented him with the medal in person. And this isn't just a, hey, thanks. This is like, no, he was only the second person after Thomas Jefferson uh, that received this award from the French government. No way. Munson was a modest man, and with prohibition looming, wine wasn't something our country was championing, which explains why much of his story was lost for so long. Luckily, this house and a thriving viticulture program at Denison's Grayson College are here to keep Munson's memory alive. 
All right, here's something that just occurred to me. The entire French wine industry is in peril. Who steps in and saves them? A Texan. They get themselves into World War II. Who steps in and saves them? The Americans. A Texan, oh, Daniel. Wait, do we know it was a Texan? Eisenhower is a Texan. Is he though? Yeah. He was born here, was he not? If you're born on Texas soil, you're a Texan for life. What is it called when you win something uh, post unanimous? Post yeah, yeah, posthumously. How do you yes. say that? Post Malone, I think is what Post Maloneishly. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the way I can spell and talk, I'm definitely a Texan. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm gonna say. We saved France, but we butcher English. Now by saving grapes, Munson saved more than just wine. He also saved the grape spirit, cognac, which is why Cognac France and Denison, Texas are official sister cities. To taste that history, let's head to a local distillery inspired by that monumental feat, Iron Root Republic. This family-run operation is making some of the finest bourbon whiskey in the world. And this is co-founder Robert Licorice. Hey, hey, Chet. How's it going, Chet? I'm Robert. Uh, let's kick this conversation off with some whiskey. Oh, I'm actually going to start you out with a little brandy, if you're all right with that. That's fine yeah. by me. Forgive me if this is a dumb question, right? But if, if you ferment grape juice, that will turn into wine. Right. If you distill it, that will turn into brandy. Correct. OK. And if it's brandy from a special region of France. Cognac. OK. What should I expect to be different about a sip of brandy? So brandy is going to be similar, except that you're going to have a lot more fruitier elements. Mm. So just like wine has a bouquet. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and there's a finish of grape juice. Yeah, that's why I drink it all summer long. Robert and his brother Josh fell in love with the art of distilling, traveled the world, and then trained under a 10th generation cognac distiller. But they always knew that they needed to put down roots. If we're gonna use French techniques to make whiskeys and brandies in Texas, we might as well do it in Denison. I know that it, it might have started here, but y'all have expanded quite a bit, right? Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> it got out of hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It got out of hand real fast. Yeah. Soon, Iron Root had a full line of spirits, many of which are crafted with unique heirloom corns. We've actually distilled over 65 different species of corn. Wow. Because corns, they're actually a little bit like grapes, and the fact that if you use different species, you get really different flavors. Whatever they're doing, it's working. Their Harbinger bourbon actually won best whiskey in the world in 2020. Well, let me pour you one of the other corns, and then you can go back and talk to Jonathan about how it's all made. How do we say cheers in French? Chin chin. <laughs> chin, chin. <laughs> chin chin. Welcome to the production facility. I got to introduce you to my friend. This is Jim Bowie. Jim Bowie, that's a good Texas name. Yeah, so he was born in Kentucky and we hope he dies in Texas. Yes, there you go. Giant pot still, we do double distillation. You think this really makes a ton of difference? Absolutely. Really, okay. You can tell there's a lot of viscosity of the spirit. Yeah. It has everything to do with the shape of this guy. That's awesome. They take nothing for granted. Everything gets experimented, tasted, refined, and tasted again. Or we can turn on the columns and then we can strip out for vodka or the base for gin. Y'all make all that? We make all sorts of stuff. Why get really good at one thing when you can get really good at everything? You gotta play around. Yeah. I love the smell of a barrel barn. <laughs> you never get used to it, so it always smells good. Okay, good, oh. good, good. And so, I mean, these are destined for different places. Some of these are bourbon, some are corn whiskey. Irish style whiskey. Really? Brandy and the big fooder right here. And it's handy that y'all have a spout on it. Well, that's for easy access. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Barrels are cool. But there's nothing cooler in Texas spirits than Marsha, the crowned mother of Texas whiskey. Welcome to our home. Oh, this is great. Now, do you think your sons are crazy? For Aren't sure. Aren't we all a little bit crazy? Well, yeah, if we admit it. <laughs> that is. Okay, what's this bell? Oh, this is one of our favorite traditions. We had the opportunity to travel to France to visit some of the oldest cognac cellars. And when we walked in, she <laughs> rang the bell and she said, did you feel that reverberation? Yeah, yeah. So do our barrels. And we want to remind all of that uh, cognac, we don't make it for ourselves, we make it for our grandchildren. And it reminds us each day of how blessed we are to be enjoying these great whiskeys. Oh, I love that tradition. And now you need to taste some of it yeah. so you can uh, <laughs> understand our traditions. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so this is barrel number one. And by barrel number one, I mean the very first barrel from the very first distillation, the very first time Jim Bowie ever got to make bourbon. You're lying. Nope. Yeah. It's like ice fishing. 
Hey, Chad, I think you might actually catch something this time. <laughs> I wish I could disagree. Here we go. Let's get the whole family Come in on, here. Guys. Oh, I'm just going to be honored. I always carry one of these with me. So. <laughs> sure you do. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> 10 years. It's a 10 years ten and years. many, many more decades to come. I believe in France, they call pre-dinner drinks apéritifs. We just say, bottoms up and let's eat. And conveniently, one of the most beloved restaurants in town is next door. Welcome to Huck's Catfish. The folks behind Huck's have been casting their nets in Denison for three decades, reeling in hungry folks looking for delicious catfish platters or American classics served with southern sides and hospitality. This is owner Carol Ramsey. Ooh. All right, Chad, this is the chips and salsa of the fish industry. Okay, hush puppies and butter. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. People just eat this with everything. What is so it? It is, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's green tomatoes. Sour green tomato relish. Uh, it's not sour, it's sweet, it's spicy. I've never in my life seen this. Just try it, just try it, just try it. Just just it. There we go. It. I mean, the people know what they're doing. Oh, That's there you good. Go. Okay. And then the onions, just as a as a garnish. People just, people just chew on them. Sort of like a Huck's toothpick right here. You're trying to clean your teeth out. Maybe if you're on a date here with somebody special, don't do it. But I'm not. I've only got y'all, and I'm not kissing you. <laughs> Thank God, no kisses. Huck started in '94 when founder John Payne wanted to bring Mississippi Delta-style catfish to Texas. Very soon, it became the must-stop catfish of Texoma. And after working here for 20 years, Carol is now at the helm, keeping the traditions alive and the grease extra hot. What's the secret? It is a Mississippi style. Okay. So What's that mean? It's light. It's flaky. It's okay. not your traditional hard cornmeal. We use a corn flour and then seasoning. We're not gonna share that with you. <laughs> a little special magic in there. Got to really cold fish. Yeah. Really soft breading. Really hot oil. It's good. <laughs> That's it. It, it really what is. What else good. do you need in life? You don't. Nothing. Yeah. What does that feel like to have to carry the mantle for this place that is so important to so many people? It's humbling. Yeah. I still drive up and I'm like, oh my gosh, that is mine. <laughs> he laid these bricks so well, all I have to do is walk on them. And that's what I plan to do. A road paved in golden brown. And it's time to travel Catfish Lane. I'm your Huckleberry at Huck's Catfish. All right, so I got a full order of catfish. So I got a couple fillets of Cajun, a couple fillets of the regular, pinto beans, fried okra, coleslaw. Oh, that's good. You know, sometimes like a traditional cornmeal gets real heavy. This is like a gentle embrace of the catfish. Oh, good. All right, and the Cajun? Like a little more punch. A little bit more laissez les bon temps roulé, you know what I mean? Here's the Huck's tradition. Catfish and green tomato relish. I see what they're doing there. Kind of like putting a pickle on a burger. It gives it like a little vinegar punch. Dude, I'm not gonna lie, some of the best catfish I've ever eaten, without a doubt. It just tastes like clean, dip it in the relish. You've got this fish's dead relatives looking at you from the walls. It's the whole Hux experience and I'm here for it. That's good, man. Denison's impact reaches even further than its main street is long. It's a history of blazing trails and helping others, but never forgetting to slow down, enjoy the views, and celebrate a bit along the way. Man, that last stop was fun. Was. I really enjoyed that. What's going on up I there? don't know. I think I got a little turned around. There's a river up ahead. That doesn't seem right. That says Red River. Chip, we're Red? going into Oklahoma. No, we're not no, going no, into no, Oklahoma. No, 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 Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at the Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper.